Hello students. So, in today's class, we will continue our discussion about the ionospheric uh, physics, uh, basic aspects of ionosphere, how the charge transfer or charge uh, electrons and ions are created. Okay, so, in the last class, we have seen that the ionospheric electron densities uh, vary with respect to day of the day, with respect to time and with respect to the solar cycle. So, generally, so it is uh, during the solar maximum, the electron densities or the ion densities are the maximum and during the daytime, they are maximum, right. But interestingly, from uh, the ionosphere is, the ionosphere is, is a region which, which is at the uh, 50 to 600 kilometers of the atmosphere of the earth. So, the ionosphere is a region which comes or which couples very, very well with the atmosphere, there is neutral atmosphere below and the magnetosphere above. So, the ionosphere is right in between neutral atmosphere and the, the top side ionosphere extends into the magnetosphere. Now, so in each of these layers, in each of these uh, places, various different physical processes are occurring and these processes are specific to the kind of pressure, the kind of temperature that is available at these heights. So, what you see is that the ionosphere is coupled with various other physical aspects of these particular layers. Let us say aerial precipitation, joule heating or joule dissipation, solar extreme ultraviolet radiation, plasma spheric downflow, starlight, scattered radiation, meteors, UV radiation, X radiation, very energetic particle precipitation. So, most of I mean like like 90 percent of these, these effects are of the solar origin. So, the ionosphere is very well coupled with the, with the processes or the effects that sun can throw. At the same time, the ionosphere, the bottom side of ionosphere which is also called as the D layer is very well coupled with the tides and gravity waves which originate in the lower atmosphere. So, so the, the top side atmosphere, the top side ionosphere is the F2 region is very well coupled with these forcings that are coming from the sun and the bottom side ionosphere is very well coupled or it's, it has a strong, uh, it has a strong bearing uh, on the uh, tidal and wave activities, gravity wave activities that happen from the lower atmosphere. So, in addition, the, there is also coupling between the D layer and let us say the immediate layers above. So, there is a coupling between these two layers as well. So, that is what you see here. The E layer, F1 layer, the lower thermosphere layer couples very well with the D region of the ionosphere, right. So, the point is the atmosphere is, is a coupled system that we know already. The ionosphere and the neutral atmosphere are very well coupled and ionosphere is also the region which very well uh, couples with the solar forcing. Okay. Now, if you look at the principal ionization processes, we have already seen that in the in the ionosphere, the major chemical ion species are O plus, O2 plus, NO plus. These are the major chemical species which are to be found in the ionosphere. So, if you see the principal ionization processes, how does the ionization happen? Let us say if you if you start from the top, the electromagnetic radiation indicated with the H nu will interact with N2 releasing an electron and N2 plus and this N2 plus may, may again dissociate to N plus N and may also combine with a O2 giving you O2 plus charge exchange reaction and similarly the electromagnetic radiation may, may uh, ionize neutral atomic oxygen or neutral molecular oxygen leaving behind uh, ions of let us say O2 plus or O plus. So, the, this, this is the, these are the major chemical uh, photo ionization processes which happen in the ionosphere and because of which there is sufficient amount of electron and ion density. Now, these ions can be of this, any of these. Okay. So, and depending on the height, you will find any of these at different heights. Now, so for example, so if you want to understand what are the major chemical major principle major ionization processes these are the these are the ones which can uh, which can uh, form a cycle right now so in the ionosphere what you see is is 
production you see production that means electrons and ions are produced and the production is equally balanced with, with the recombination. So, production is the process by which electrons and ions are released in the, ionos in the, in the ionosphere and recombination because the electrons and ions will recombine giving you the, back the neutral species. So, these processes the production process and the recombination process go hand in hand. So, they will always try to uh, minimize the effect of the other. So, if you want to write a simple continuity equation the rate of change of electron density with respect to time can be written as production this is q is the production term l is the loss term and del e is the is the transport term. So, at any given instant let us say in a given space. So, if there is solar incoming radiation in this so there are electrons and ions produced. So, with time this electron density or ion density let us say this is n indicated with n will change with respect to time. So, the, so let us say for example, why does it change with respect to time? So, during the daytime, let us say starting from the sunrise till the sunset. So, as the time changes, we will realize that more amount of solar ultraviolet radiations or X radiation is available. So, more more ionization will happen. So, the the number of electrons and ions in this in this volume will change with respect to time and this the total volume will change that the, the production is there loss is by the recombination and there may be some transport of ion species or electron species from the outside. So, the total rate at which the charge densities change will depend on the production term, the loss term and the transport term. Okay. So, this is the basic, uh, basic uh, form of the continuity equation. Now, the loss, so the Q is the production, the loss can be written as the rate at which the electron density decreases with respect to time. So, there is a minus here. So, which will be, uh, which, which can be written as uh, minus times alpha is the recombination coefficient. Rec alpha tells you how, uh, uh, how fast the electrons and ions which are created may recombine to give you back the neutral species. So, alpha will depend on the electron density and the ion density. So, if you say if you establish photochemical equilibrium for charge neutrality, let us say for charge neutrality, you say that the number of electrons is equal to the number of ions. So, if you substitute E for P plus or P plus for E, you will realize L is equal to min L uh, minus alpha times E square. So, this is if you can you can substitute this into the equation. So, the equation of continuity will look like d n by d t is equal to Q minus alpha times E square minus del E. So, this is the basic form of the continuity equation. So, this is n E you can the similar continuity equation you can write d n i by d t is equal to q minus alpha p plus square minus del e right. So, this is the continuity equation. What is the use of continuity equation? Continuity equation can be simply used to calculate how the electron density or how the charge density varies with respect to time right. So, if you look at the principal chemical processes in detail in the thermospheric and ionospheric system. So, basic processes are photo ionization that means uh, incoming photon ionizes an atom or molecule or dissociates a molecule. Yeah, incoming photon if it has sufficient amount of energy may ionize an atom or molecule this process is called as photo ionization. Collisional ionization is the one in which an ion species collides with a neutral species and transfers the charge onto the neutral species. Okay. So, collisional ionization is a process in which an electron uh, can come in contact with a neutral species and ionize because of the excess amount of energy that the electron has. Charge exchange is the process in which when a neutral species and an ion species come together and the charge uh, the, because of the interaction between them it is only the charge which, which will get exchanged from one. Uh, one constituent one one species to another species. Conversion is the process in which an ion species may come in contact with the neutral species and as a result uh, some dissociation may happen and overall there is availability of uh, there is equal availability of ions. And recombination is the process in which uh, species will recombine and giving you back the neutral species. And dissociative recombination is the one in which if a molecular ion let us say is, is there and if it uh, comes in contact with an electron this molecule 
which has an ion will be dissociated because of the excess amount of energy that electron has. And radiative recombination is the one in which electron will simply recombine with an ion giving you the neutral species plus some amount of energy. So, this is the, the basic names of the processes are photo ionization, collisional ionization, charge exchange, conversion, recombination, dissociative recombination and radiative recombination. So, for example, so here what you, so we have already seen these are the major chemical ion species that you see in the ionosphere O plus, O2 plus and N2 plus. How do they form? They form, so this, uh, so here one, one very important thing is that, so one very important thing is that the energy of these photons is, is, is not the same. So, the energy that is required to ionize oxygen, molecular oxygen and nitrogen will be different. So, it may so happen that if in the topmost part of the ionosphere or 250 kilometers or 200 kilometers, it may so happen that if, if, the, if the particles uh, has enough amount of energy, they will simply ionize giving you ions. Okay. Now, so, uh, now so generally in uh, combining all these processes, combining uh, all these processes, the basic way in which the basic way in which ions can be produced or electrons can be produced is a neutral species and energetic photon giving you a positive ion and an electron. This is the most common process. A neutral molecule and a high energetic photon giving you a positive ion, a molecular ion and an electron. At some times it may so happen that you have a neutral species and an electron can get attached to this neutral molecule and giving you a neutral, uh, giving you a negative ion, negative molecular ion. This may so happen with a, with an atom as well giving you a negative ion. So, here uh, at this point, so before it is it's always, it's always the uh, positive ion. So, the, the positive polarity is held only with the ions and the negative polarity is held with only with the electrons, right. Now, in addition to these set of reactions, it may also happen that electrons can exist in the plasma or in the ionosphere. So, major chemical species of ionosphere, the major chemical species of ionosphere could be electrons, ions. So, in this ions you can have positive ions, you can also have negative ions and you have neutral species. Neutral species as in O, O2, N2, things like that. So, the point is in the ionosphere there will be positive ions as well as negative ions. So, this this we will talk in detail about that about this type of reactions which are called as the attachment reactions where the electron simply gets attached to a neutral species and forms an ion because of the because of the electron the ion is now a negative ion. Okay. Now, the types of the various different types of uh, chemical reactions. So, here one, one very specific thing that we have to understand is that let us say now these are the processes in which electrons are released that means these are the processes which will form the ionosphere. Now generally what happens you have a reverse process like this. So, you have x plus plus electron giving you x plus h nu that means a radiative recombination right. So, you can also have uh, all these processes in the reverse direction that means this is production and recombination. Like I say production f uh, creates the ionosphere recombination will, will, will lose the electron density that is available in the, in the ionosphere. So, ideally the production should be equal in number with the recombination that means all the electrons or ions that are produced should be lost when you remove the source of light or source of energy for the ionization, but it does not happen like that. Why does it happen? I mean why it does not happen is that, so different recombination reactions with different species, let us say if you have a recombination with electron and a molecular positive ion, if you have a recombination with electron and an ion. The rates and now this x y plus could be anything, this, this x y plus could be n o plus, this x y plus could be o 2 plus right this the, and this x plus could be n plus this x y plus could be could as well be n 2 plus this x plus could be n plus o plus uh, h plus right. So, that means that what I am trying to say is the way in which electron 
can recombine with NO plus or O2 plus or N2 plus will be different. How will it be different? I mean, in which parameter is, is it going to be different? This, this parameter is generally called as a recombination coefficient. Recombination coefficient will tell you how fast electron can recombine with NO plus, how fast electron can recombine with the O2 plus. So, similarly, electron can also recombine. So, the point is it may depend on the way in which recombination may happen between selected species. So, if if so, let us say if you have 100 ions, 100 ions can be can be a combination of this different this six different types of ions and on the other side you have 100 electrons. These 100 electrons are subjected to recombine with various species. So, what may so happen that some processes could be very fast and some processes may not be so fast. So, the processes which are not very fast will make sure the availability of electron and ion density during the night time. This is the main reason why electron density does not cease to exist when you remove the source of energy the sun right. So, this is the main reason that means that out of the various physical the various chemical processes that we have seen every every chemical process has a rate I mean has a speed with which it will proceed. So, few processes of these are very fast and few processes are are kind of slow. So, there are so it, it matters I mean how, which process is taking place at which particular altitude and how long is, is this process going to take and as a result if this is taking beyond the scope of the night it will make sure that throughout the night there are enough amount of there, there are enough number of electrons present in the ionosphere right. So, types of ionospheric chemical reactions. So, the most important process is the radiative recombination process. Radiative recombination is a very simple process where the, the ion will recombine with the electron just the exact opposite of the production process. So, it will result in the ion getting neutralized with an electron as to form X and H nu. Right. So, this reaction is very slow I mean this, this has resulted into the neutral species plus some amount of energy right. This reaction is very slow I mean this will this the reaction rate coefficient is of the order of 10 to the power of minus 12 per centimeter cube 12, 10 to the power of two, minus 12 centimeter cube per second ok. The next process is the dissociative recombination reaction. So, this is a very important process when you have a molecular positive ion if it combines if it recombines with an electron this will break this will neutralize this molecule and this will also break to conserve momentum and energy this will break the molecule into two atoms. So, this could be uh, anything this could be any molecular ion could be an example for this, but this dissociative recombination is a very fast process it happens very fast, but that means that this process not only recombines or not only makes the uh, the charge density disappear, but it will also make sure that there are neutral atoms available in the in the ionosphere. So, this this is a very fast uh, process the reaction rate coefficient is 10 to the power of minus 7 centimeter cube per second. So, this is like very fast in comparison to this right if you compare these two the radiative recombination reaction will take a lot of time for for removing certain amount of electron density from the from the ionosphere, but the dissociative recombination is a very fast process in comparison to the radiative process so, right. Charge exchange is simply a transfer of charge from one molecule to other molecule. So, this is this process is again I mean this process is moderately fast, but the most important thing is charge exchange will not be able to remove electron density. So, our uh, the, our first objective is to understand why does ionosphere exist in the night time. So, because when, when we say that solar energy is the one which creates the ionosphere it is natural to ask a question if you go to the night side where there is no sun why should the ionosphere exist. So, now the, the answer for that is that uh, there are several processes which happen kind of slow and fast uh, as a result of all these processes there will be ion density and electron density. So, charge exchange is a process in which, which does not actually uh, Go, gets rid of the electron density is just a transfer of charge from one ion to another ion and atom ion interchange that what happens is if if an ion uh, comes in contact with 
with a neutral molecule what happens is so the the, the atom is also getting exchanged so this is taking the place of let's say this is, this x plus is taking the place of z and z and also at the same time transferring the positive charge to z right so so that this result i mean charge is exchanged and atom has uh, switched places into the into the molecule so this rate the rate mainly depends on the strength of yz bond so how close are they bonded so that so this the energy that there is carried by x plus should be able to should be able to break this dissociate this molecule and then attach this uh, neutral x with the with the y so as to form this molecule right so in a sense what you see here is that one one very good uh, message is that it is the dissociative recombination reaction which is the fastest chemical process that happens in the ionosphere so dissociation dissociative recombination takes care of many things i mean we will see how how they will they will differ okay but let's see how uh, how exactly do they do they matter so if you want to calculate the recombination time let us say you have electron density certain amount of electron density if you want to calculate the recombination time let's say for example if you have certain amount of electron density available in the ionosphere and if you remove the sun i mean if you uh, remove the source of ionization from the picture the recombination time is the is the duration of time over which all the ions and electrons will recombine and result in the net neutral condition right so the rates at which the electron density would disappear will decide the existence of ionospheric layer at the particular at a particular time so time constant this this is defined as a time constant so time constant so this is in the dimensions of time so this is so alpha is a recombination rate of a particular reaction of a particular chemical reaction alpha and e is the electron density which is participating in that particular chemical reaction so take an inverse you will get the value of time constant so for example if you have electron density let's say if all the f2 layer peak electron density which is 10 to the power of 12 10 to the power of 12 uh, electrons slash ions per unit volume so this is the peak f2 layer density if all this peak f2 layer density is handed over to radiative recombination process which is 10 to the power of 12 into 10 to the power of minus 18 taken in inverse so this is the amount of time this is the amount of time 10 to the power of 6 what is it 10 to the power of 6 seconds so which is several hours nearly like uh, hundreds of hours right so that means that if all the electron density that is existing at the f2 peak which is 10 to the power of 12 electrons per unit volume are handed over to one single process let us say you get hold of uh, o plus you get hold of o plus which are again 10 to the power of 12 uh, in number and then you allow this electrons and ions to recombine so it's going to take 10 to the power of 6 seconds for all the electron density to vanish or recombine with the positive ion but generally what happens if at, the, at any given height you have electrons and you have i mean you cannot choose this so you have ions and you have various different types of ions right so electrons so some electrons may try to recombine with this 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 what you will realize is that all the recombination that happens with the molecular ions is very fast is very fast that means it will be able to take care of the electron density in a very brief time so let's say dissociative recombination is the reaction that i am talking about so if you put 10 to the power of 12 against 10 to the power of minus 13 so this is 10 to the power of minus 13 uh, raised okay minus 1 so this is just simply like what 10 seconds so this is very fast so if you hand over all the electrons to the molecules the 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 entire electron density will vanish within a matter of few seconds but if if you don't have the availability of molecular ions if you have only a single atomic ion then it is going to take forever that means so this this time frame is beyond the scope of the night that means it will make sure enough amount of electron density is available at any point in the night time but so at the point is at different altitudes in the ionosphere at different altitudes in the ionosphere different type of chemical species for example different type of uh, chemical uh, positive ions will exist and depending on the number in which electrons will interact with each of these ions due to the reaction rate coefficients being different few reactions will be 
will be done in a very short period of time and few reactions will not be done over a very long period of time. Eventually, leaving behind the scope that electron density or the ionosphere to exist beyond the night. Okay. Now, so uh, this is the discussion pertaining to uh, various layers of the uh, ionosphere and uh, various chemical processes which will which will occur in the ionosphere. So, for example, so we have seen that let us say if you go back simply, so this reactions every reaction has a characteristic lifetime and this characteristic lifetime is what decides uh, how far or how, how long are they going to be available in the ionosphere. Okay. So, now then at, uh, for in the next class we will try to discuss uh, the various layers of ionosphere in detail, what are the chemical processes that will uh, be existing or that will be dominant in each of the layer, layer by layer we will try to understand and layer by layer we will try to uh, write the equation of continuity in the suitable form. Okay. So, that is uh, that is about the ionospheric introduction, we will continue with this discussion tomorrow.